Okay, so I'm going to do a simple experiment and we're going to use momentum principle to do some stuff. It's going to be great and we're going to make it way better and this is, this is really, I'm trying something new here. I'm going to do a little video editing, stuff I don't normally do, might mess it up, that's going to be fun. Um, but it's part of a series. I want to do some problems with momentum principle. I'm going to start simple. We're going to use Python. We're going to do numerical calculation. It's going to be great. Okay. I'm kind of, I'm kind of excited. Okay. So this first part, I'm kind of baking it, but I will go back and edit this slow motion. The first thing I want to do is to find out uh, how long it takes this ball. To, I'm going to take this ball. I'm going to drop it a meter. And then I'm going to use this uh, Google stopwatch here to time it and a slow motion video to know exactly how long that took. Okay, so let's do this first part right here. I already videoed it in slow motion. I'm just repeating this. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start this and then drop it and then stop it. Okay, then by looking at the video, I can then go back and determine how long that took. And then we're going to use that with the momentum principle. Okay, so let me get the time and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. I looked at the video, slow motion video. I will include it. Um, vertical video, sorry, but I used my phone in slow motion so I could go through and get the time at the start and the stop. And, and I don't know it's exactly one meter, so we'll, we'll have to deal with that. But from that, I started that, this is actually Y1 is at one meter, Y2 is at zero meters, T1 is 2.37, T2 is 2.8, so that gives me a time to fall of 0.43 seconds. Okay, so let's use the momentum principle and see if we can do the same thing. Okay, so the momentum principle says this, F net is delta P over delta T. So I know, uh, and let's say this is the tennis ball, I'm gonna give it a mass just for fun. Let's say the mass is 0.1 kilograms uh, and so also I need to know the gravitational force. So the force on this, the only force acting on it while it's falling is the gravitational force. And this is the gravitational force but interaction between the ball and the earth. So this has a magnitude, Fg, of Mg, where G is the gravitational field. It has a value of zero, negative 9.8, zero newtons per kilogram. And I am, I'm using the notation from uh, my favorite book, Matter and Interactions, uh, Shabai and Sherwood, published by Wiley, uh, great book. Uh, if you want to do this in a different way, that it's still the same physics, okay? The, the notation may be a little bit different. Uh, also, it is important, I believe, to use the units of newtons per kilogram for G and not meters per second squared, although they are equivalent, okay? Um, and I also think it's important to call this G the gravitational field, not the acceleration due to gravity. Okay, so I can calculate this force. I know the mass and I know G. I'm going to put the numbers in at the end. I know mass, I know G, and that's the gravitational force. Mg equals P2 minus P1 over delta T. And I, I measure delta T. I already did that. Okay. Uh, so let's see how we're going to calculate how far it fell. Um, we could do it. We could do another. We, we have two things here. We have the distance and the time. One of them we have to assume, and one have to calculate. Let's just start working on it. Well, that's G. Okay. If I release this from rest, the initial momentum up here is zero. P1 is zero. But I can still solve for P2. So let's solve this for P2. I'll multiply both sides by delta T. Those cancel. And then I'll add P1 to both sides, and I get P2 equals P1 plus Mg delta T. Now, I notice vector, vector, vector. You can't add vectors and scalars, so these are all vectors. Now, uh, P1 is 0, the 0 vector. So that means P2 it's just going to be mg delta t. And this is going to be m 
V2 equals m g delta t. Since the momentum is m times v, four slow moving objects. The mass cancels and I get V2. Okay, so if I know G, which I do, well, if I know delta T, which I do, I feel pretty comfortable in my delta T. Okay, so really that's why I want to find out how far it went. Then I, I know the final velocity. Now, there's something else I can find, and that's the average velocity. Let's, I'm going to erase all this stuff, and let's put Let's do the average velocity. Uh, delta, let me write del, delta t is 0 0.43 seconds. That's important. The rest of the stuff I can delete. Delete. I'm deleting the board. That's what I said. I said I'm deleting the board. I've been using my computer too much. OK, so as this falls, I know the average, the definition of average velocity is delta r over delta t. So if I use my origin right here, let's say this is r2 and this is r1. And it, it actually doesn't matter where my origin is because delta r is going to be the same. And, and really that's what I want to find. I want to find delta r. So let's just solve for delta r. So the average delta t is delta r. I have v2. I don't have v average. Okay. So what I can find v average. V average is v1 plus v2 over 2. This is true if. This is true if there's a constant change in velocity. It's changing at a constant rate. Then I can just take the initial velocity and the final velocity, add them together, and divide by two. That's just like an average. Um, in more extreme cases, if I have a mass oscillating up and down, clearly it's not, the velocity is not changing at a constant rate. That won't work. So, I guess I'll stop. Where was I? Okay, so V average is V1 plus V2 over 2. Uh, I also know V2 is that. Okay, so I can put all of this together. I can put this with delta R over delta T. That's the two definitions of V average. So let's solve for delta, delta R. Delta R is going to be uh, V1 plus V2 over 2 delta T. And now I'm going to use that for V2 and put that in, and I get V1 plus G delta T times delta T over 2. Um, that, I, I cheated, really, because there could be another V1 in here, but, but V1 is 0. Okay. So I'm going to have to get rid of this already. So now I get this. 1 half g delta t squared. And that's my change in r. That's a g, that's not some s. Okay. And you may have seen that equation before, that 1 half a t squared. That's exactly what that is. That's exactly where that comes from. Let's go ahead and solve for delta r. So delta r is going to be 1 half times, i got to use my correct notation, 0, negative 9.8, 0 times 0 0.43 squared. So delta r, I know, is going to have a 0 component in the x direction and a 0 component in the y direction because this vector has 0. It's the only thing that can change is in the y. OK, let me pull out my little calculator here. You know, I like to use Python. I don't really have a calculator. And I'm going to show you a better, another way to do this. Um, it's going to be awesome. OK, so just. Just don't worry about the calculator part. I could probably do this without a calculator. But. So trinket, new trinket, new trinket, close script. OK, so I'm going to put in g equals 
vector 0, negative 9.8, 0, dt equals 0 0.43, 0 0.43, dr equals 0 0.5 times g times dt squared. Print dr. Run. 0, delta r equals 0, negative 0 0.906, 0 meters. Not 1 meter, but pretty close, right? And I, I was just holding that up here. And you can go back and look at the video and probably, I, I think, I feel pretty comfortable in that number, okay? That that is how far I dropped it. So that's using the momentum principle. Okay, now we're going to do it again. But this time we're going to do it as a numerical calculation, and it's going to get even better. But I'll say that for another video, because I don't want these to be too long, and I don't want to edit them with the new camera. Okay, bye.